I'm going to do a little bit of a smorgasbord today, um, a little bit from all the readings because all of them have some really good things um, to think about in the readings. Um, one is in the book of uh, the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 45, it says, just says the Lord uh, Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, is doing the nations before him, making kings run in his service, open doors before him, and leaving the gates unbarred. Um, so, you know, it'd be one thing if it was the Lord's anointed was David or the Lord's anointed was uh, Saul or, or Solomon or Hezekiah. But to have uh, Cyrus, who's a Gentile, who's a Zoroastrian um, from Persia as the Lord's anointed was kind of interesting. Um, I guess it's the, uh, the old adage that, uh, that if you can't find someone to be Israel, then he'll choose, uh, then God's sovereign choice is to choose uh, Cyrus to be, to be Israel, to, to be the light to the nations, to, um, to, to, uh, to spread the, the good news of, of salvation by God um, and by using the Jews to go back into, um, into their homeland, um, that Cyrus is being that king. Um, the other one that's interesting is in um, Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Um, he talks about coming to Thessal Thessalonica, uh, modern day Thessaloniki. Um, he says, we, we care, the gospel did not come to you in word alone, but with power and the Holy Spirit with much conviction. Um, and so how was, he, how was Paul going to uh, minister to the Gentiles? It would be one thing very easy for Paul to minister to the Jews. After all, he has a great pedigree. He is he studied under the best of the rabbis. Um, he knows the Hebrew scriptures, but how is he going to minister to the Gentiles? And so he says that I came not just in word, um, but also in power and the Holy Spirit with much conviction. So in other words, that his message went forth, but it was God who was uh, informing their hearts and God attuning them to listen to the message, God um, causing them to to become curious and to uh, and to consider uh, Christianity. Um, so God was doing all those things. So it wasn't just his message. It wasn't just that Paul was a great speaker, although you can certainly see he was powerful in word, uh, but. It was the fact that God's conviction was there because without that conviction, it would have been like, okay, that's interesting, you know, interesting what you have to say. But, you know, we, we you know, you can, you can have the God of, you know, the, this Jesus and we can have, um, you know, Artemis and, you know, and all the other gods and goddesses and we'll just take those and, you know, we can talk about that, but that's fine. Um, but again, with much conviction of the power of the Holy Spirit uh, in the gospel. What you have is that you have the people who are plotting against uh, Jesus doing the divide and conquer. So you have the Sadducees, those who controlled the temple, uh, those who believed only in the first five books of the Bible, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. Um, those who um, were fairly wealthy because they controlled the temple um, and fairly powerful. You had the Sadducees who had the synagogue, and the synagogue was really the place of worship on a particular Saturday to hear the Hebrew scriptures proclaimed uh, and discussed. And so that was uh, the Sadducees. The Sadducees believed that meticulously following the law, the Messiah would come. Uh, so they needed to meticulously follow the law. Uh, again, the temple was really only for sacrifices. The temple was for the, the various offerings of the law and for the festivals. But the daily, the week in and week out um, worship of God was done in the synagogue. So we have the Pharisees. Then we have the Herodians. The Herodians are those who are kind of like get along and go along. Um, you know, that certainly we have an occupying force. But, you know, we have peace as opposed to all the wars that we've had for hundreds and hundreds of years. We also have uh, a Roman government that has allowed a certain amount of religious freedom. So, you know, let's just go along with the Romans and let's just try to live in peace with the Romans. Uh, then you had the, um, the, um, 
the Essenes, uh, the Essenes you don't see um, in, the, um, in the Gospels, but the Essenes were a people who were kind of set apart. They had their own communities. Think of Qumran. Uh, they had their own communities. They tried to live apart um, and to really live in a monastic kind of a lifestyle. Um, many who were celibate, uh, they did have married families there with them, but again, periods of instruction and kind of like a monastery, so kind of set apart, even more so than the Pharisees. Um, and then you had also the Zealots. The Zealots were those who refused to accept any Roman rule and were seeking to try to oust the Roman government by any means. Um, so you have the Pharisees, and they're now talking with the Herodians, which is an interesting couple, <laughs> an interesting group, you know, to have, you know, your one group of people you wouldn't necessarily associate with uh, being friendly toward the other, but they both had a certain dislike for Jesus. Um, the Pharisees, you know, were certainly subject to a lot of um, uh, ridicule for their hypocrisy, whereas the um, the Herodians um, thought that too much Jesus uh, stirring up things would be bad f uh, for this people of Israel and make it Rome involved. So what they did was they thought they had a perfect plot. Let's take, um, you know, you're so wise, you're so holy, you're so wonderful, you're so truthful. Oh, by the way, is it lawful to pay the census tax? Uh, so the census tax was especially hated. Um, it was, you know, not only, um, you know, that they had to pay the tax to Caesar, but basically having the privilege of being occupied. Um, so they thought, you know, it was a double hostility. One, it was a high tax, but then the other one is that it was like you're paying for the privilege of being occupied by the Romans. So a very hated tax. But if he says, yes, you pay the tax, then he's going to be hated by the people because the people really hated the tax. If he says, no, you don't pay the tax, then the Herodians would go and they would talk to the people saying that he's seeking to do insurrection. So they thought they had him under a barrel. Jesus says, bring the, bring the coin that pays the tax. He says, he said, what well, is inscription? Whose face? They said, Caesar. He says, pay to Caesar. What Caesar to God was God. Um, so again, that divide and conquer. I think one of the things about um, our society today is that we've tried to make the things of God political. Um, people have tried to do that and divide and conquer by making the things of God political. So things that really shouldn't be political, they should be, you know, moral, they should be, um, you know, something that both sides, whether politically left, politically right, can get together and agree on. Instead, what happens is you see them as being political. So whether it be you know, the, um, the agreement that life should be from conception to natural death. Again, people, you know, making that political so that you're on one side or the other, divide and conquer. Um, the idea of family life and marriage and all these kinds of things that are going on in our society. Again, that we should, should work together to have agreement on. Instead, what we see is that they're political, the divide and conquer. So, uh, again, when we think about in Jesus' time, the people seeking to divide and conquer still exist today in our life. So thanks and God bless.